two F-8 cruises in the Western Pacific and Vietnam. And I've been with the F-14 since almost inception. So I've only been in the fleet for a year. Previous to that, I was just going through student training to learn how to be a backseater in the F-14. I've always been into fighter aircraft since finishing flight training. I was in 31, and we deployed to Vietnam during the height of the war. We were fortunate enough to bag a make over there. And basically, it was in an ACM environment. First question you may have is, what is a Fleet Fighter ACM readiness program? It's a three-week, highly concentrated aerial combat maneuvering training environment designed to expose you to what we deem to be the potential threat that you might face in an actual combat situation. For the purposes of simulation, we're going to be looking at two airplanes. The F-5E, which is a supersonic, highly maneuverable aircraft, which we feel simulates a potential threat. We're also going to be using the A-4E, which is a subsonic, also very highly maneuverable airplane. We're going to fly the majority of our hops on the East Coast Air Combat Maneuvering Range, which is located about 60 miles off the coast southeast of Oceania. The Air Combat Maneuvering Range employs instrumentation so we can track in real-time simulation up to eight airplanes simultaneously and also employ the weapon systems, the missiles, and the guns that you would have on board your F-14 airplanes. I'm Commander E.T. Smith, Commanding Officer of Fighter Squadron 43 at NAS Oceana. I started flying when I was 13 years old, and to me, the only way to go, of course, was to be a fighter pilot. Fighter Squadron 43 is probably the most challenging squadron in the Navy. F-14s, that'll be you. Your purpose will be to defend that carrier. There is a good deal of instruction that we bring to the squadrons with whom we fly. But I like to think of it as being done on an equal-to-equal -equal basis rather than God to people. Which will be simulated by our F-5s. We'll penetrate this corridor and attempt to sink your carrier. Your objective then will be to intercept We work with the whole squadron, from the CO to the boot ensign who just graduated from the replacement training squadron which is most important in that you're trying to stop the advance of the enemy toward your defended point. The net result of all this will determine your tactics. I'm Lieutenant Commander Foltz. My tactical call sign is the Indian. My lecture this morning is 1v1 fighter maneuvers. The reason I give this lecture is good section The most important thing in our utilization of non-Navy fighter aircraft is to make the fleet air crews identify, compete with, combat, and hopefully beat airplanes with markedly different performance characteristics from their own. And behind the bogey, now you can re-attack from the advantage position being above the bogey. Our graduation exercise is going to be a four versus four exercise, where we're going to utilize the maximum capabilities of the ACMR with four F-14s in the sky, two F-5s, and two A-4s. We've got a scenario that we devise specifically for that mission. Cap station, so we'll be running an individual cap station. We won't be running in section. We'll split it up. I'll take over on the uh, left, and then we'll go middle, Mike, and on the right. John, like you, down overhead. The ship at 145 at 80, you're going to be the cleanup man. Don't know what type of formation they're going to come in, but I suspect that they'll come in in some type of uh, flight of four with the F-5s uh, providing escort to them. That's what we'd hope. The first guy to get the vector, if he's the middle man, would pick him up, go back in, then we'll have the other two, giving them with a pincher, unless they come from the flank position in here. The first guy that comes through, goes ahead, blows through, makes him turn if he can, or gets a good shot if he can. If he can't, he goes ahead, does a good VID on him, winds up so that the two and three men that are coming into the fight will be able to get a good aim seven shot, all right? This afternoon on the 4v4 versus the Jollies, we can count on them having four up jets, up radars, and aggressive tactics. Our experience with them has been that they come to fight. 
We want to complicate their problem this afternoon as much as possible. What I want to do is to run in two sections with the A4 in the lead, about a five mile trail, with the F5s low outboard, looking through the A4, trying to find the F14s. The F5 has a primary job of finding, engaging, and tying up the F14s. The A4s haul chili. Let's go for it. <laughs> behind uh, the stern of me and I didn't have the A4 and the uh, other F5 in sight so I pitched back and I realized that uh, you were on mic and it was too late to counter counter your attack on Sorry Mike. Once we got a BID on the A4 we took a Fox 1 and then continued to tail the section and got a Fox 2 then pitched back into where the F5s we thought were coming from. Did you see me Doc? No I didn't have you until you got into uh, lethal range. I knew that I was dead once I picked you up. Walter called me back, and by then it was too late. The temptation was to try to come up into the fight, but we stayed overhead the ship, pointed the game plan, and it, and it worked. You accomplished your mission. You killed both the bombers. In general, an exceptionally fine engagement. The F-5 makes, a, I think, a terrific adversary. The best way to train, you learn by your mistakes, but but in this case, you got your mistakes right on tape so you can see them. We all come out of this knowing the capabilities of everybody else. We feel confident in flying with our wingmen or with our leads. I came out of with strong feelings that we don't get enough of it. We need more of it. It teaches you enough to save your life. 